Hi, this is Margaret Maloney, and welcome to the Death Dhamma Podcast. Together, we will consider life, death, and impermanence. Because in between birth and death, we lose things, not just our glasses and our keys. We lose identities, relationships, ideas, and more. But what we can gain right now is facing this together, and we will gain freedom, peace, and progress on our path. Hello, my Death Dhamma community members. How are you today? Well, we've listened to interviews with 12 wise teachers plus lessons learned. And as we inch towards the end of season two, the rest of our time is going to be devoted to different thoughts and lessons and tips on handling impermanence in our lives. Because we know that that's how things are. And yet sometimes as human beings, we grapple with this so much, right? And it's the ability to handle with those little states of impermanence, the little things, which is the title of today's discussion. It's the little things that helps us become more resilient and get ready for the big things. In our lives, we're going to have a series of small incidents of impermanences and larger incidences. And we are going to work to build ourselves to be able to handle them all in a way that minimizes our suffering. So, you know, people ask, what does it mean, death with a lowercase d? Or how does impermanence help us face the bigger challenges in life? These are questions that I get when I I discuss with people what's happening on season two of the death trauma. And it's that the little lowercase d, not explicitly discussing the death of a loved sentient being, although, you know, sometimes we still do that, but really discussing the other types of death we experience. For example, you know, maybe you wanted ice cream. And I know this is going to sound maybe minuscule, but bear with me. You went to the store, let's say it was mint chocolate chip ice cream. That was your favorite and it was out. You had to select something else. In that moment, you experienced the loss of your ability to fulfill your craving for mint chocolate chip ice cream. Other losses, of course, feel much more significant. You know, the end of a relationship or your job or your car is totaled. And these are the types of losses that can be called death with a lower case D. On any given day, you have things that you believe went well, meaning that you believe you got what you wanted. But you also have things that didn't go according to your plan. And this leads us to consider how impermanence can help us face the bigger challenges in life. It's really how you handle these various losses that condition you for the bigger challenges that you are going to face. I described the inability to buy your favorite flavor of ice cream as minuscule. What do you think? How do you react when you cannot have your mint chocolate chip or some other treat? Do you accept it, select another flavor and move on? Or do you take it as a personal affront, perhaps inspiring a rant along the lines of, they know this is a popular flavor. Why can't they keep it in stock? Who does the ordering? I should complain. I just wanted this one small thing. Can't I even have that? Don't I deserve my favorite ice cream at the end of a hard day? No, there's no entitlement. There's no deserve. There's just how things are. You wanted that. It wasn't available. Now you're going to deal with the disappointment and the loss, right? I mean, there are some very entitled people who do rise to the occasion during times of loss. Absolutely. You know, there are people that you see who would have a complete and total rant over ice cream, but then are somehow able to handle big situations very calmly, very calmly. Frequently, most of us, how we handle these smaller challenges can be an indicator of our ability to deal with death with a capital D. You know, when a sentient being we love dies or when we face our own mortality. Your Buddhist practice gives you the tools you need to build your resilience. The Four Noble Truths remind you that there is dissatisfaction and you control your own level of dissatisfaction through clinging and aversion. This is not a statement of blame. This is an observation of what it means to be human. When you can accept this truth, you will find it easier to navigate impermanence. Start small. You don't have to immediately go right to, I'm going to die. You can benefit from truly reflecting on the truth that there is suffering 
and on the source of that suffering, wanting things, people and outcomes, you know, having a desired effect, clinging or not wanting things, you know, aversion, not wanting things or people or outcomes. You want your favorite ice cream. You do not want to have to make another choice. You know that things are always changing. And the more we hang on to our perceptions of how things must be, the more difficult our lives become. If you really did experience strong negative emotions over the ice cream, what did that do to your day? Your blood pressure went up. You felt anger. You experienced tension in your body. You had hard feelings towards the store or the employees. And this disrupted other events and probably your interactions with others. And these reactions did not magically make your ice cream appear. Next time, you can try going to the store with an open mind. You're going to buy your favorite ice cream. If that flavor is not available, you have a second and possibly a third choice. You know what? And if there's no ice cream, you have another choice. Or you're not attached to having ice cream or a cold icy treat at all. When our plans fall apart, we are presented with an opportunity to embrace impermanence. Those broken plans are a representation of death. Something you relied upon went away. An assumption becomes invalid. A cherished thing breaks. A relationship ends. Pay attention to your emotions as you watch your plans die, because it is a kind of death. Pay attention to your emotions as you begin to watch your plans die with acceptance. As you begin to become comfortable with how uncertainty is always a part of your daily life, you can begin to project beyond your daily plans to bigger things in life. The plans you have made for your week, your month, your year, all of this is built on a perception of control and an illusion of certainty. It plans help us to navigate our lives. Keep making plans. And as you do, acknowledge that there will be impermanence. Some of your plans or elements of your plans will die. And when this happens, call it death. Remind yourself that this is a type of death. Now you are living with death. This is how death with a lowercase d and impermanence work to help you become more resilient. Being resilient does not mean never feeling disappointment or anger or sadness. It means feeling those emotions and not allowing them to run your life. So for today, I ask you to consider what you think you have planned, what's, what's on tap for the day, how do you think your day is going to go, and go about following those plans, and notice when things change, how does it feel? Where does it hit you? How do you react? And what do you do? And does it matter the intensity with which you were invested in the plan? For example, maybe you had lunch with a friend, but you really didn't feel like going out to lunch today and that friend cancels. That's a different feeling than maybe you were going to go to a movie at the end of the day and you were really excited and that got canceled. So be with your feelings as things change and notice how you respond because that is an important first step. Thank you. See you next time. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com. M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be at ease, and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.